Welcome to the Comic Scoop for May's Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month video. I'll be starting this video off with this year's and yesterday's brand new release of Marvel Voices Identity Number 1. And we have a great cover here done by Chris Lee and Romulo Ferrado Jr. Featuring uh, four popular characters, uh, Wong, Shang-Chi, Mantis, and Camilla Khan as Miss Marvel. Let's take a look in here. So I enjoyed this read, uh, especially uh, we have a foreword here done by Isabel Su, who is a Taiwanese-American uh, senior manager um, for uh, video games at Marvel. And I uh, really like this a, a lot. I kind of connected with it. In uh, her foreword, she kind of mentions the whole uh, idea of growing up as like a first-generation American, you tend to, uh, at a younger age at least, believe that being an American is kind of like, you know, like a white American, and not necessarily what um, you know, what her parents had wanted her to be. And um, as time went on, she realized that, you know, the idea of uh, being American isn't necessarily that, but, um, you know, being able to incorporate your traditions and your culture and blend it in with the other blend of cultures that we have here. And so I, I enjoy that one a lot. We have some four great stories here. Um, this first one is drawn by the uh, cover artist, actually, uh, Creasley. And uh, we have uh, Jimmy Wu from the Agents of Atlas and uh, Shang-Chi who are under the influence of Crossfire, and they are pitted against one another uh, for their lives. While well, we have uh, a group of bigot rich folks that are betting on which guy can, which one's going to win. That was a fun read. Uh, and we have some great cameos along with it. In the uh, next story, we have Kamoa Khan, who... Um, Camilla Khan's the, the new Miss Marvel, and she's actually the first uh, Muslim superhero, uh, pa Pakistan origins, and um, it's, this story was interesting. Uh, she has a similar um, love interest from the past, uh, Cameron, this guy here, and he brings her out to speak with her, and this whole time she's you know, skeptical of the whole situation because he has, in the past, gained her trust and fooled her once. Uh, in between the next two stories, we have an interview by uh, Janice Chiang, who is the first Chinese-American woman letterer at Marvel. So I thought that was a nice read there. The next story, I, uh, I enjoyed a lot, actually. Uh, so, we have Mantis and uh, Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy. And they uh, go to this planet because of some strange energy signature. And they come across this shape-shifting creature who um, keeps uh, turning into different characters from Mantis's past. Uh, bringing up old wounds. Um... And uh, she has to face her fears and uh, conquer them by conquering these figures until she finally accepts. And I, I really liked it a lot. And the final one is uh, a real fun one. Uh, we have Wong, who is uh, trying to protect the Sanctum Tentorum from this demon that is trying to get in and steal all the magical... Uh, items that are in there while Doctor Strange is out. Hence the title, While You're Out. So, um, yeah, I recommend you guys to go pick this up. It just came out, so it shouldn't be too hard to read. Uh, too hard to find. And um, that last story, uh, While You're Out, is written by Emily Kim, which actually uh, helps me uh, segue into my next section here. All right, here I have an issue number one of Silk. This is the most uh, recent run of Silk, written by Emily Kim, uh, with the help of Takashi Miyazawa doing the interior artwork. 
And uh, Audrey Mock is the uh, artist credited for this awesome variant cover, which uh, I kind of like to believe, I guess, she's on the side of a building, so it's probably supposed to be like that. So, um, neat read. I, uh, I'm actually really upset at myself. Issue 5 came out yesterday, and I remember staring right at it, and I totally meant to grab it, and I didn't, but uh, it's alright. Um, you know, I can show you guys that one uh, another time. Uh, but yes, this, uh, so Silk, uh, is the alias of Cindy Moon, who's one of the many, uh, spider people, and specifically Cindy Moon was bitten, bitten by the same radioactive spider that bit Peter Parker all those years ago. I guess 70 years ago, to be exact. Uh, so this was a fun read, and Silk is a pretty interesting character. I definitely enjoy, um, definitely enjoy, like, where she comes from. And, um, you know, the whole, uh, Spider-Verse, uh, thing with, uh, uh, Morlun, uh, seeking down other spider, um, people. People that have spider abilities to, like, siphon their energy. Uh, it all kind of, like, starts with Cindy Moon. Uh, because, you know, she's been in hiding for so many years because of these people. And, uh, that's definitely a major part of Spider-Verse. There's kind of, like, a... It's a few different phases there. The next person I want to give a shout out to is Mike Chow, who is a um, interior artist and cover artist. Um, he um, is well known for his work in X Force and Uncanny X Men, and uh, actually, like his his run in X Force was what. Um, Hmm, how do I word it? So the, the first time I ever picked up X-Force was specifically X-Force 10. Because uh, I thought Warpath on the cover there looked real cool. And, I mean, there, Ghost Rider, come on. But yeah, these, uh, his artwork is great. Um, and it's definitely unique. I have been really enjoying um, his portion in uh, AWA Upshot with uh, Jim Michael Strzeginski. Uh, here's Moths. I've, uh, been reading this recently, actually, uh, like the last week or so. Uh, Moths is pretty cool. Um, it, those of you who watch my AWA Upshot video, I, um, mentioned Res The Resistance, which was one of their Kickstarter, um, series. The, so there's a global pandemic, and the majority of the human population dies out. And a percentage of the people who survive this plague develop special abilities. Now, this is one of the first. Um, this is one of the first uh, titles to come out that's directly tied into the resistance, moths. So we have this character who um, she has been. Uh, she's curious to open up her her abilities and uh, the thing about this is once you tap into your ability you have about six months to live which is really intense actually and uh, so this is my child's uh, artwork which is pretty surreal like it almost makes me think of like a video game cutscene and I say that in like you know with like utmost positivity I know a lot of times when uh, someone mentions uh, video game cutscenes, it's usually in not the best light, but I guess that's that's specifically about uh, the CGI in certain movies. But I, I really enjoyed this, and this story was really cool. I highly recommend it. Um, the, um, yeah, so this power that uh, she's able to bring out is the power of empathy, which sounds kind of lame at first, I, I guess, I don't know, I think empathy is a really great ability to have, she can not only touch on to other people's feelings, but have them feel her own, which brings up the bigger tie into um, the resistance, where um, we have one of the characters from the resistance approach her, because there's a war about to start, um, actually, uh, I believe, hmm. yes, uh, so this war is about to go on, and, um, she sneaks over to pass on her, 
empathy abilities or uses her empathy abilities to pass on the emotion of peace and understanding. So these, um, so the military doesn't go and kill off all these innocent protesters. Uh, I have, I've been really enjoying this one a lot. I highly recommend it. Um, so that's Moths uh, by AWA Upshots. Uh, definitely, you know, go to your local comic book shop and uh, pick up this trade. You won't be disappointed. Oh, and uh, real quick, uh, another thing about uh, Mike Chow that I almost forgot to mention. Actually, it's probably like the coolest thing about him. Uh, so, you know, he has some really interesting artwork, and, uh, in fact, in 2015, a, um, video game company, uh, Kotaku, had mentioned that, uh, Mike Chow was one of the 20 best artists for X-Men in the history of X-Men. And, uh, more recently, in, uh, 2021... Uh, September of 2021, where uh, Moths actually came out uh, earlier that year in June, um, Screen Rant named uh, Mike Chow as the top 10 greatest uh, X-Men interior artists. So definitely check out his work, because that's uh, quite the title. Next up I have here is Alyssa Wong, who is um, a writer for Marvel. Um, they are... Uh, they are more famously known for their work in uh, Star Wars' uh, Dr. Aphra. And Dr. Aphra, I, um, I first was introduced to, and I, I guess is actually um, Aphra's first, in, uh, first appearance in Darth Vader's uh, number three issue, uh, done by Kieran Gillian. In uh, my trade here, let's see, I remember I placed it. Um, let's see, yeah. Dr. Afra, and this is supposed to take place shortly after Return, um, sorry, A New Hope. And issue three is uh, her first appearance. And later on, uh, she was such a popular character uh, who is a criminal archaeologist that uh, Vader had um, allied with to help his task of trying to overthrow Emperor Palpatine. Later on, Vader gets stabbed in the back by her. Um, because Palpatine himself actually hires her to turn ties. And, um, well, she's something of an anti-hero in her own, uh, series. Uh, but definitely check out, um, Alyssa Wong's Dr. Aphra, those of you who are Star Wars, uh, fans. Uh, and this series is actually part of, um, is considered part of canon. So if you want to keep up with that kind of thing. And uh, I was able to meet Alyssa Wong um, when the Extreme Carnage uh, event was going on. There was all kinds of writers and artists who were part of Extreme Carnage at Third Eye Comics. And um, I was able to get uh, Alyssa Wong's Riot issue signed, as well as this issue of Dr. Afro. And uh, those of you who are fans of symbiotes, uh, Carnage, or Venom... Uh, I, I know I am. I, I love all things symbiotes, so definitely check out Alyssa Wong's Riot as well. And Extreme Carnage was a real cool take. And um, Alyssa Wong is also currently working on the new Iron Fist series, uh, featuring a brand new Iron Fist um, named Lin Lee. Lin Lai, sorry. Um, the newest issue, issue 3, just came out yesterday as well. And this one was really cool. Um, Lin Lai was once the uh, swordsman. And, uh, well, there was a magical sword that he had, I guess, inherited from his father and brother. And um, that sword was shattered by the white fox. And shards of it went into his arms and wrists. Um... He had fell into a Kung, La, uh, Kung Lung, and the um, Undying Dragon had uh, bestowed him the power of the fist. Now, in this issue, uh, we get to see Lin Lai as a child and with his brother, and his first, like his first uh, introduction to the sword that would completely alter his life. 
And within this issue, we find that his brother is still alive, but now one of the minions of the Dark Destroyer. So I'm curious to see how this brother versus brother fight's going to go. And uh, the Iron Fist has to uh, protect the rest, the remains of this sword from another demon entity. And he does that the only way he knows how, by... Hmm. By incorporating the rest of the shards into his own wrists with the re with the other pieces, that takes serious guts. Next, uh, I have here um, my most favorite Hulk uh, uh, Hulk uh, storyline, and probably one of my favorite uh, comic book stories of all time, Planet Hulk. And this was uh, written by Greg Pak, who is a uh, half Canadian, half uh, Korean writer. Uh, Planet Hulk is fantastic. Um, so because of the Hulk's um, erratic nature and, you know, he's literally a time bomb, um, the Illuminati lures Hulk or Banner into a uh, space station that um, ships him off to what's supposed to be a peaceful, uninhabited world where he can live his days without harming anyone. Uh, unfortunately, nothing goes as planned because that's what happens when we make plans. And instead, he f uh, lands in Sakar, a terrible, violent planet. And he is enslaved and put into the pits and forced to become a gladiator fighting alongside other gladiators this is an absolutely awesome story uh anyone watch gladiator uh, when that when that came out well think about putting hulk into that and it's essentially you know, he re you know gains the loyalty of the the fans and tries to overthrow the evil uh, red king we even have some great cameos in this one, too. Highly recommend Planet Hulk. And uh, Greg Pak is also one of the co-creators of the Hulk's son, Scar. And uh, Scar is um, a uh, half-breed of a uh, Gamma monster and, uh, and the uh, shadow of his mother which uh, we meet in, uh, in this Planet Hulk story. Two of them create a wonderful life together, although it is short. But something great does come out of that, and that is Scar, who is kind of like the Conan of Gamma Monsters, son of Hulk. Definitely check that out. Uh, next up I have here, who is uh, my favorite cover artist, um, uh, Peach Momoko. I actually, like, specifically collect her, um, you know, every, every, like, well, not every, but almost everything that she comes out with. Um, she's very popular right now in comics. Um, you can find her work anywhere from Marvel to DC, IDW, uh, Image Comics. Uh, but definitely, uh, Marvel seems to kind of have, like, the biggest claim on her. Um, I, I featured, uh, this on my Star Wars Day video, which, uh, Peach Momoko did. So she even has some Star Wars work there, which is under Marvel. Um, I have this really cool, uh, box specifically for her stuff in here. Uh, I'll put together a different video for her very soon, and, uh, we'll get to, uh, go through some of that. But, um, Demon Days, Rising Storm. So this is a thing I'd like to point out right now. Uh, Demon Days. Uh, first issue was this one, X-Men. Features a version of Psylocke. And, um, it's really cool. De Demon Days is actually her very first, um, fully made comic. Uh, so she's mostly known for the doing cover art, but she does the cover art and the interior artwork, uh, and wrote the story herself. 
Um, and it's really cool. That takes a different take on the traditional characters of Marvel and puts them into like a, a very traditional Japanese folktale. Uh, so the trade uh, for that's going to come out really soon, and I'll give you guys all a shout out when it does, and we'll take a deeper dive into that. Um, yeah, Peach Momoko had also did last year's Marvel Voices Identity for um, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and that's her cover. Um, so yeah, that that was pretty neat. I liked I liked it a lot. Um, Let's see, from yesterday's uh, yesterday's new releases, she actually has a couple of different things. There is uh, this really beautiful cover, Greetings from the Savage Land. And this, I believe, is uh, issue 28 of X-Force. And I remember a few months ago, uh, Peach Momoko had posted on her uh, Facebook that uh, she like posted this picture. And immediately, I already fell in love with it. And I remember her saying how uh, much of a challenge it was to do an entire cover that didn't feature people. Because usually her work is, you know, centered around a person. And sometimes there's other things in the background too. But this one's specifically all plants. It's all background. And a couple of really cute uh, sauropods there. I really like this one a lot. I had to get it. Um, and there is a, uh, a really cool series called, uh, Electra, Black, White, and Blood, just like that Moon Knight one, and there is a Wolverine as well. Uh, so, Peach Momoko is so popular that they had her do both, and, and, uh, you know, like, both, like, the standard cover A for this issue, as well as a variant cover for it. I um, I always kind of hate buying more than one of the exact same issue, but uh, it, was, it was worth it. I love it. And not only did she do the uh, the um, cover art of this, but she actually has one of her own stories in here. And in this issue, we even have uh, Kevin Eastman, who's the, one of the co-creators of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, yeah, sorry. The, this is too great of a spread not to share. Electra versus um, the Ghost Rider, and uh, as I said in my last video for the Black, White, and uh, Blood vi um, comics, it's really cool because it's all black and white minus all the red things, just like in Sin City. And um, let's see, I want to show you guys the Peach Momoko one, and we'll take a better look into this when I do my video for the new releases that this came out with. But just look, look at it. It's Fantastic. So we have a Demon Days styled of um, Electra. And I, I really like it a lot. So it's like Peach Momoko has created her very own universe, basically. And I love that Marvel has given her this liberty to you know, do exactly that. And she does fantastic artwork like her. Look at that. And I love these eyes. Like She has some real crazy eye stuff. Uh, especially like the things that she posts on Facebook, uh, like she has really intense eyes. You know, just you know, just like in that last year's cover. So that's Peach Momoko, uh, fantastic. Uh, and she was actually just um, last year, you know, uh, nominated and received a couple of awards. Uh, so for uh, 2021, she won the Eisner and the Ringo Awards for Best Cover Artist. Uh, so that's fantastic. And so uh, I had mentioned that um, in this first issue of Demon Days X-Men, which there are five issues, um, we feature a Demon Days version of Psylocke. And now with this, I'll transition to my character spotlights. All right, so here is Psylocke, one of my favorite X-Men characters. We, and uh, we even have this Marauders number one featuring Psylocke, and it's a Peach Momoko cover. See that great transition there? So, um, Psylocke is two different people. Originally, uh, Betsy Braddock, who later on uh, swaps bodies with 
a uh, Japanese assassin working for the hand named uh, Quanon. And uh, that's who Salak is now. Now with like Hickman's new uh, revamp of the uh, X-Men, Betsy Braddock has taken the mantle of Captain Britain. And uh, uh, Quanon is officially Psylocke. And Psylocke was created by Fabian uh, Nicia and Andy Kubrick, uh, who first made the appearance in X-Men 17, 1997. Uh, and that was um, Psylocke as, the, uh, as Betsy Braddock, the new Captain Britain. But now, with her new identity, um, Fallen Angels is a great issue featuring uh, Psylocke and um, uh, someone from her past uh, comes out, uh, someone who brings up a lot of, you know, past trauma. So Psylocke, with the help of some other young teens, uh, get together and um, seek out revenge. And uh, it's definitely a fantastic story. When uh, Hickman revamped X-Men, they came up with uh, about five different titles. Fallen Angels is one of them, and I highly recommend Fallen Angels. It's really great. Next up for my character spotlight uh, would be uh, Shang-Chi. The uh, growing popularity from the movie last year... Mm has uh, really uh, changed things up for Shang-Chi. I have a really gorgeous uh, variant cover for issue 2 here done by Peach Momoko. And uh, this brand new series that's done by uh, Jean Luen Yang and Marcus uh, Tu uh, has you know, altered some of his background a bit. And um, So originally Shang-Chi's uh, father was the villainous Fu Meng Chu. Um, but due to that not being culturally appropriate, uh, they changed it in the movie for his father to be the uh, legendary Mandarin. And um, yeah, originally, the Mandarin has these ten uh, finger rings that he had found in an alien spacecraft. Uh, but now the rings are like these um, wrist gauntlets uh, that give him these extra powers. So, this is the most recent issue that just came out last week of uh, Shang-Chi number 12. We have gone about 10 months since this issue, at the minimum. Um, and uh, this was a really cool issue. So we have uh, Shang-Chi. Uh, he has inherited his father's death cult, which he is trying to reform. And uh, he has stolen the Ten Rings from the Jade Emperor. Now, his grandfather is on the hunt trying to take these rings from him to get ultimate power. And uh, they have a really awesome battle. This is like the big finale of the series, uh, but it's definitely not over yet because, um, you know, pretty soon they're going to start up with a another series picking up from where this one leaves off. And I definitely wanted uh, to feature this really awesome variant cover for issue 5 which is uh, one of the uh, few Alien vs. variants that uh, Marvel did to uh, celebrate the incorporation of aliens to the uh, Marvel um, to the, the Marvel bookshelves. Yeah, I really love this a lot. Got a got like the swarm of drones just like all crawling up on top of each other trying to reach Shang Chi, and he just kicking ass. Like that's great. My final, but definitely not least, uh, character spotlight is on Wolverine's vicious son, Dakin. Original name, Aki uh, Akihiro, who uh, was first featured in uh, Wolverine Origins number 10 and 11. Now, I first jumped onto Wolverine Origins in uh, issue 27 when uh, Dakin um, confronts his father. Now, a little backstory of Dakin. Uh, Wolverine, long time ago, settled down, moved to Japan, and fell in love. Uh, and with his wife, they had uh, created... Uh, well, uh, they 
I guess, created a child, but she had yet to give birth to him because the evil Romulus stole that life away from Wolverine by killing her. And um, he went back to his, his ways in the States. Now, little did he know that his sons had survived, and Romulus has had been raising him this whole time, putting it into his mind that Wolverine, his father, was the murderer of his mother. And so Dakin, now, you know, after all these years of being brainwashed to be a, an assassin, a vicious avenger, just like his father, is, you know, hot on his tail trying to get his own revenge. Um... All this comes out in uh, Original Sin uh, under Wolverine Origins, so definitely check that out if you want to get the backstory of uh, Dakin and, and see some really great uh, fights of Wolverine and his son going toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Uh, his son's uh, blades, or his uh, claws are a little different, which um, he has like two on his fist and then one in his wrist. I kind of rhyme there. And uh, so they don't... Uh, they're not enemies for very long, as you can see here, the jumping with each other, uh, because it comes to light through this story that Romulus is the actual culprit. Uh, but the next big thing, though, is um, the uh, Moru Masa Blade, which uh, you see Dakin holding here. Now, Dakin's able to get this from Cyclops, and just like how his father's skeleton is incorporated with the Animanium, uh, the metal from this blade is given to Dakin and with this metal he can have the ability to kill any person with a healing factor. Pretty sinister. And uh, if you are interested in other tales with Dakin, definitely check out the Dark Avengers because Dark Avengers number one is where we first feature Dakin as Wolverine. And Dark Avengers uh, is really awesome. One of my most favorite times in comics when uh, Norman Osborn makes his twisted version of the Avengers uh, hiding villains in plain sight. It's definitely really awesome. Uh, Dagon is super cool, and I highly recommend you guys to check check him out. Uh, the feud is no longer hot between these two. Um, you know, during, like, the uh, X-Lives and Deaths of Wolverine, um, Dagon, along with X-23 were seen side by side helping out uh, Wolverine to defeat the things going on there. Definitely check out some of my uh, past videos uh, for more on X Lives Wolverine. And uh, in the near future, I'll actually put that all together as one solid video. All right, everyone, thank you all for watching. This was a very fun video to uh, put together. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, any comments, please uh, type away. Make sure to like and subscribe and always share. And um, until next time, keep on reading, guys.